like you would make it. Lesson 123, we're done after today. Awesome. Well, you guys have done a good job, I think. Of course, I'm only guessing here, never ever having seen your faces or met your senior work in the least, but I feel confident that you've done a decent job. So here we go. All right, last lesson of the year. Here we go. Numerals and numbers, let's start with that. Well, that's a number. That's a number right there. That's a number right there. All right, that's what a number is. We, we usually in, uh, in, you know, in America think, oh, numbers are this, but technical term, those are numbers, okay? It's impossible to know what those numbers are. It just, it's just too confusing and too big, but it's some number, all right? That's a number. Now, a numeral, this is a numeral. That's a numeral, okay? The numeral three is we look at that, like in this one, we go back and we go, oh, there's three dogs, there's three balloons. There's three clowns that could stare at inside, you know, at your window at night by the cemetery and kill you in your sleep. No, okay. But the numeral, that's what the, you look at that shape and you go, yep, yeah, I know what that means. That tells me there are three of something, okay? Ways you can write the numeral three. I mean, you know, I don't know, five minus two is one, uh, you know, 51 divided by 17, you know, uh, eight minus five, you know, two plus one, all those ways you can write the numeral three. The types of numbers, um, you need to memorize these. So write these down on a four by six or three by card, a five card and memorize these because next year and in years to come and on standardized tests and junk like that, they're gonna ask you for, oh, give us the set of so-and-so numbers, blah, 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 including the, you gotta go, oh, you know, whatever. So just know these numbers, you're gonna keep seeing them over and over in sacks of math. So memorize these babies, okay, here we go. The natural, or in other words, they sometimes they say counting numbers. Well, we know what counting numbers are, right? They're just one, two, three, and then you just keep going and going like that. Now let's go ahead and write this as a set, like we're doing a set. So there's our little set notation, all right? Whole numbers, they are the set of numerals, numbers that go, this this the same here, a whole number also includes zero though. And so on, it just goes on into infinity and beyond. Okay, an integer, integer comes from the word Latin, so where we get the word integrity, where a person is completely whole in his honesty and you know good work ethic or whatever. And, Integers look like this. And we're going to go back from negative infinity. Let's say negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then just keep going and so on. Okay. All right. Those are integers. A rational number means it can be turned into a. What's another, what's another name for a ratio is a what? Fraction, okay. So in other words, this is, you know, three halves, um, nine sevenths, negative four thirds, eight, right? Because the number, the numeral, eight, you can turn that into a fraction by sticking it over one, right? You can turn any, any number like that as a fraction, okay? Irrational, obviously, cannot be turned into a fraction, okay? Now let me, you should know this, so just write this down. There are two main types of irrational numbers, all right? The first type is pi. That is a famous irrational number that cannot be uh, made into a fraction. The second type of irrational number is a square root of some number that doesn't, you know, give you an integer for an answer. Wouldn't be the square root of nine, because that's three. But the square root of 10, or the square root of five, or the square root of 37, or something like that, those are irrational numbers. Now, real quickly, you already know that rational numbers, let's say it's a fraction, right? Let's say it's one third. That's a rational number, right? It's a ratio. Now, the decimal just goes 0.3333333, and it repeats. Another rational number, is let's say three fourths, okay? And you know the decimal of that one too, it's 0.75 and it just stops, that's it. So rational numbers either 
have a like a repeating decimal or they have a what's called a terminating decimal. It just stops. That's it. It doesn't do anymore. Irrational numbers will never have, like if you were to carry out pi, there isn't any pattern to it. And there are other numbers like, uh, oh, let's say one seventh. And what happens is you get like, it's point one four two eight five seven, and then that part repeats. Every fraction on earth will repeat at some point. Every rational number. Irrational numbers like pi and that square root will not repeat in a recognizable pattern. Okay, all together, these are called real numbers. Real numbers are numbers that may be found on a number line somewhere. Okay, we'll talk more about um, imaginary numbers. There is such a thing. We're going to do imaginary numbers uh, at the end of next year, I believe. So, okay, so they will ask you questions like this. To which number sets do negative three and two thirds belong? Okay, so let's go back and we'll try negative three first. All right, negative three. All right. Is it a natural counting number? In other words, if you're, let's see, how many children do I have? And you're, let's say, one of the Duggars or something, you know, you're, you're not going to start by going, you know, this net negative three, you know, I mean, you, negative three is not a part of the counting number, so no. Whole numbers, no. Integers, yes, that's one of them. Negative three is an integer. Rational number, can you turn negative three into a rational number, into a fraction? Heck yes. Over one, right? That's a rational number. If it's rational, then it ain't irrational. So anyway, that's your list of number uh, types of numbers that negative three belongs to. All right, let's go to two thirds. Well, let's just write two thirds, okay? First off, we know it's a rational number, right? It's a ratio, it's a fraction. So it can't be irrational by definition. Is it an integer? No, okay? Is it a whole number? No. Is it a natural number? No, nobody counts things and says, you know, how many pi or whatever, how many kids do we have in the room? Two thirds. That's weird. Okay, anyway, so that's the sets of numbers that two thirds belong to. So that's basically it. What you want to know is memorize those types of numbers. What I would do if I were you is um, take a, that three by five card or four by six card and write it nice and neat and maybe put a couple of examples. And definitely put for irrational numbers pi and the square root of something that doesn't work out. And then put that in your notebook, like in, the, like in the middle of your notebook or something like that. Don't write it on a piece of paper. Put it on a card, then carry it with you to your Algebra 1 class next year. And of course, the videos are right there on YouTube for you to discover and enjoy. Um, and then you can use that next year to kind of remind yourself, you know, what, what kind of number is that? Oh, whole counting? Uh, oh, wait, uh, you know, irrational and so on. So do that. Okay. All right. Well, let's look up page 393. Go ahead and pause it and we'll try our very last problem, practice problem of the whole year. So here we go. Okay. Well, let's go to three, 393. To which number sets uh, do three and pi belong? Okay. So let's first go to three. Let's go back up here. Well, three. Is three a natural or number, or counting number that you use when you count things? Yes. It does belong to that. Is it a whole number? Yep. Is it an integer? Yep. Is it a rational number? Yep. It sure is. It can be turned into a ratio of three over one. And by definition, of course, it's not an irrational number. So that's all. Okay. It's a real number. All right. Let's go to pi. That's your next one. We've already kind of talked about that. Well, is pi a natural number? No. It's not a whole. It's not an integer. It's not irrational. It's only irrational. Okay. And that's it. All right. Oh, look at that. Can you believe this? Look at this. End of slideshow. Click to exit. We are done. Look at this. You know how many, you know how many slides we did here? Look at that. 832 slides. Can you believe that? That is crazy. Anyway. Well, I hope you guys had a good year. Go ahead and do your last problem set. Do a good job on it. Do the last tests. Um, you need to make sure that you really score 80% or above on those last tests. And I hope you've been doing those. And uh, listen, blessings to you. Uh, you know, if you want to contact me with any questions, feel free to do that. If you're ever interested in doing dual enrollment online classes, I'm offering those at, from a Christian worldview where you can uh, earn college credits if you'd like uh, in high school. So look at my website, homeschoolpartners.net. And may the Lord bless you in the rest of your year. And uh, glad to help out. If you want to contact me, you can get in touch with me if you want. It's just Scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, 
at homeschoolpartners.net. That's my email address. So you guys enjoyed it. Had a great year. Thanks. Come back for Algebra 1. See ya.